So we're back. Another episode, Wild Out Wednesdays, episode 10, right? Yes, sir. Episode 10. So we we moving. Got another special guest. Last week had a had a great special guest. Another one here, one of the OGs, Wild Out Crew OGs from what 2013? No. 20, 2018. 2018. I'm tripping right <laughs> yeah, 2018 with uh, got to watch him go all the way through the high school ranks, and now he's at Wheaton College, um, but was a all region wide out for, for me. Um, also, you know, did a lot of did a lot of good things for us at Ravenwood. Scored against one of the best, IMG. You know, had some had some good highlight in her sophomore year. Mm. Two touchdowns as a sophomore um, in the game, so it was good to see see him grow up through through the system. But glad to have you on, my guy. How, how did everything? Yeah, appreciate it. Everything's been good. We're obviously in spring ball right now. Um, January and February, we were more 6 a.m. every day, lifting three times a week, running twice a week with the team. Now we got a little more free time, but not a ton because we got practice like four days a week and then meetings, obviously, and still yeah, lifting. Yeah, we're going we to we get into the, the, the spring ball schedule and all that, but uh, – um, but yeah, no, I'm definitely glad to have you on. But um, and you're so people know you're at Wheaton College in Illinois. What what, what city in Illinois are you at? And in, in? it's in Wheaton, Illinois. It's like it's called Wheaton. probably west of Chicago, about forty minutes or so. Yeah, gosh, and that's, I mean it's one of the top D three programs in the nation. Um, very prestigious in, in that regard. Um, I remember I, I played D three ball and. Seeing that name pop up on the, mm-hmm. the top twenty-five uh, board a lot, so um, it's it's crazy to see just you know all you guys from that class 20, 2018 and nineteen and twenty kind of all in your respective places and, and doing doing big things. But um, really, the the first question we got for you is just you know who who is Ross Johnston? You know how did how did you grow up playing football and how did that lead to where you are now at Wheaton um, and just just that story and that process. Yeah, so obviously played with you at Ravenwood. Well, you're my coach. So I, I've lived in Nashville for about, shoot, 13 years now. Um, moved around my dad's job. I was born in Dallas, moved to Charlotte, and then Nashville. I actually didn't start playing tackle to like, fifth grade. Started playing Brentwood Blaze with a bunch of the guys I know now um, from back home and stuff. Played flag before then and went on to play middle school and high school. Um, obviously in high school got to play at Ravenwood who's the top program in the state in 6A um, had a great time there and uh, recruiting led me here to Wheaton College where I'm currently a sophomore but about to be a junior obviously and really enjoying it up here too competing for as you said one of the top D3 teams in the nation so yeah yeah no, that's that's great man um Kind of back to what you said, you know, you start out playing flag. Um, what was your, what's, what's a good first memory or even just first memory you think of uh, from like the first year playing playing football? Okay, so it was like my first game. We were playing like Blackman's youth team or something. And we were like, my parents were driving me over. My dad was like, this is going to be fun. Like, it's your first tackle game. Like, don't expect to do anything. Like, just have fun with it or whatever. I was just a little kid, so I was like, all right, like, I'm sure it'll be fun. I was kind of nervous. Had three touchdowns in the first half, and I was like, all right, I might be kind of decent at this. Um, <laughs> so that was fun. Obviously, not every game went that way, but, like, it was just a funny experience because I remember it so vividly even though I was pretty young. Yeah, no, that's, that's funny. Um, so I'm, I can think back to my first year playing, too, and I'm sure you can. Yeah, I – I kind of remember stuff like that. It's like so many years of football, man. Yeah. Um, I think like some of my first memories like playing were just probably just like running around, like having the the weigh-ins, you know, everybody's going there. I had like a couple of teammates there, like, yeah. you, know, you don't want to be a double striper because you don't want to put your hand in the dirt and yeah. stuff like that. So, um, but no, yeah, I definitely remember some of like the big games, some like the, the games, like you said, where you have like two or three touchdowns. It's always funny, like as a kid, like you remember those and then you might remember like a, a tough loss or something like yeah. that. But other than that, you just remember like, having fun really I mean yeah. that's kind of that's kind of about it there but yeah yeah um now I'm going to kind of get into it. what uh I mean how how's everything going I guess like you know with your spring ball and everything um coming in because what you're about to be uh going into your third year right um yeah 
kind of what's like what's the biggest difference that you've noticed just kind of you know you're kind of coming up to be a, a upperclassman what's the what's the biggest difference in your game I guess um versus when you were a, a you know freshman coming in newly out of high school kind of what's the biggest you know jump that you think you've made since then yeah I think there are two of them probably one just like getting in the playbook knowing the offense and stuff I mean when you're a freshman you're coming in for camp and stuff and you're competing against guys that already know the system and stuff and you gotta you gotta try to learn it as fast as you can but in college obviously offenses are pretty complex ours is uh, to some degree so definitely just feel more comfortable in the playbook and then I'd say just like conditioning wise body wise just getting stronger I mean I've had two years now in our strength and conditioning program which is really solid uh just being able to run with everybody and be in shape and all that so I'd say those are the two biggest things for sure I mean what, what part are you I mean as far as strength obviously blocking and stuff it helps I mean other than that what um part of your game do you think just getting stronger helps you with I mean is it just kind of like the releases like the middle of the routes like what you know what do you think it really helps the most yeah I think blocking for sure definitely creating separation in the routes because at some point in the game you're going to have a DB or linebackers hands on you got to fight through that and I think it helps a lot with yak you know you, as a receiver never want to be the get taken down by the first guy and I'm not the I'm not like a burner or like a super shifty guy I guess so I gotta be able to fight through some contact and stuff and get my head down and get yards so yeah I say, man, you got a little shift in this too. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but even kind of segueing in, in, into what you're saying about just, you know, having a build strength and having a figure out playbook and all that stuff. What would you say was tough from that transition? And like looking back, like what would you have told yourself? And I probably might have told you, but you might not have listened. But <laughs> what, what would you have told yourself? Like 2018, 2019, 2018 years. You know now, you like, damn, I wish I would have, you know, told myself that back then. Whether it was about just playing, playing, playing the position, playing the slot, or even just the recruiting process and kind of how that went. Uh, looking back, like, what, what what would be some of the things that you would kind of tell yourself? I feel like, like recruiting, it's so complex now. It just gets worse every year. I feel like I would have definitely told myself just to find the right fit for me, like not just football, but just everything and I feel like I have now uh with Wheaton and everything which has been good but you know when you're I feel like when you're getting recruited you're trying to play like the biggest name school you can play at or kind of live up to the hype or whatever um because nobody wants to necessarily play D3 when they're growing up that's not a dream or anything but it is really good football still and it's it's reality for a lot of guys and I feel like another thing I would have told myself is just to cherish, like, the high school days in a way because it's just fun. Like, and not to say that college ball isn't fun, but the schedule is night and day different. And you got to find ways to keep it fun and interesting and stuff sometimes. Yeah, no, I would agree with that. And I'm sure I, I'm sure I told you that a couple times uh, back, <laughs> yeah. back then. But it's, it's always, like, you really start to, like, you know, dang, like, I wish I would have – like, I guess, help hold on to those words more even just even thought about that when I was in that moment. Um, but any, any, anything off of that? What, what do you no, say? no, I was going to always say, like, I mean, you know, even regardless of what level it is, like I said, I played at Austin P, which is like FCS, and then I ended up going playing at a D2. Um, but even then, like, high school still, like, I always try to tell guys, like, man, high school still fun. Like, you, a lot of the guys you grow up with, you know, you're – playing peewee against them you know, all the way up until middle school, high school. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I guess, you know, you always want to tell people, like, live in the moment. But when you're young and everything, I guess it's just it's part of life. You know, you kind of look back and be like, dang, yeah. uh, and notice after the fact. But, yeah, that's one of the biggest deals I wish people would really understand. And I think guys, you know, across all levels kind of tell people the same thing. Uh, yeah. Just like, hey, like, take advantage of it, you know, yeah. for what it is. Yeah. But, yeah. That's it. Other than you said too about just uh, play for the big, you know, Alabama or LSU and you know Tennessee or whoever, uh, but there's good football at the FCS level, mm -hmm. D two level, at the D three level, NIA, JUCO, wherever. Um, Prep kind school. Of what, what was the 
I know for me, like I played you ball and I remember going to like my first training camp and I'm like, dang, like, all right, this ain't like no walkover. I get some dudes that are to play. What was that moment for you when you got to Wheaton and like, dang, like, all right, like this ain't going to be no cake ball. <laughs> yeah, I was, I was definitely a little naive coming in. Like, I didn't think I was going to be the best player on the team or anything, but I was like, you know, it's D3. Like, I think I can get playing time pretty quickly. Well, obviously COVID impacted my recruiting a lot, but it also gave a lot of guys on Wheaton's team an extra year. So my freshman year, there was a bunch of like fifth and sixth year guys who were all studs. Um, so just being in practice with them and going up against them, like these are like 20, 22, 23 year old dudes and I'm 18 coming in there. And I was just like, man, these are grown men I'm going against every day. Like it's just, it's kind of a shell shock a little bit just cause you're not used to that in high school. And just even with that, I remember really like, I remember I was going against a guy that was saying like 22, 23, you know, probably 30 pounds heavier than me, like experience, you know, like, yeah, it's different. But just speak to that, like, just even at the extra position, at, at the wide opposition, like the, I guess the level of skill and the level of, I guess, just focus and mm-hmm. uh, skills that you got to have to even like, start at, at a D3 school, let alone, like, people know, you know, D, they, you know, I can go play D1, I can go play D2, but, like, not, like you said, everybody's not going to be able to play that, but, like, the level of like, the skill it takes to play D3 football um, at the wide opposition. I feel like, honestly, one of the biggest for me that I'm still having to work on is blocking. Like, you got to be able to block in college as a receiver. And it, in high school, I was – Obviously, in the slot, we were doing a lot of RPOs and stuff, so I was never having to do that much and really work on that part of my game. Uh, but here, you know, we kind of 50-50 run and pass, and our, we have a really good running back and a good offensive line. And I just – like, I, I've had to realize that that's going to be more of a focus in my game now that i got to work on. I mean, it's not glamorous. It's not something you're going to post on Instagram or – whatever for someone to see but like it's a necessary skill to have um and I'd just say conditioning too like it doesn't really matter if you can run a really solid route the first quarter like you gotta be able to do that all game and all practice long because in college they don't care if you're tired or not and these guys everybody's competing all practice like every game obviously like in high school I feel like there were some moments in practice where, you know, it's like relax, tempo's down, whatever. Mm-hmm. Now there, there's like none of that. We're just going, 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 and you got to be on your P's and Q's every time. So just like blocking and conditioning, consistency, probably that. Yeah, no, that's that's definitely important. Uh, you're a big, big proponent at blocking. Yeah, blocking is huge. Yeah, yeah. You know, don't block, no rock, basically sort of deal. But yeah. – uh, that's for other than that, like kind of uh, I know you mentioned earlier, like the schedule, you're in spring ball and stuff right now, like kind of give us like a glimpse into like what really is like, what does it look like, uh, you know, a typical spring schedule or even, you know, a fall schedule. A lot of people, you know, they said they love football. I love ball, you know, but like you're saying, like you until you get to college and really kind of see how it is and it's a business then it takes up all your little free time that you think you're going to have, like kind of walk us through that, like what, you know, what's been the toughest part of that, I guess, as far as just the time management aspect of things. Yeah, that's, that's true. Like everybody says they love it, but that first fall camp, you're going to find out if you actually love it or not. (laughs) But uh, no, so spring isn't like what we're doing right now isn't as much as fall camp, but it's definitely more than like a regular part of the off season. So we got practice four days a week, uh, all those days we got basically an hour long of meetings. It's broken up into like two sessions, but we got like an hour of meetings as well. Um, those practice days, we're waking up at six to lift. So we got three or four lifts a week right now as well. Um, mm-hmm. And then we get, we get like two days that are just off for class and everything, but we're doing this. I think we got three or four more weeks of it. We got like 16 practices. So, it goes on for a while for sure. And now the only thing that's different with this and fall camp or the main thing is we're actually in school right now. So mm-hmm. even those off days, you're in class from, for me, it's like 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. 
pretty much and then you got to do homework and stuff so you're still really busy and then fall camp like I don't even know I feel like everybody hears about it like it is what it is like you're getting up early every day you're lifting you're running you're you got practice you got meetings the rest of the day like it's hot it's not super (laughs) yeah it's it's hot it's not like honestly one thing about fall camp I'll say is like going in it wasn't like as physically taxing as I thought it would be like it's definitely a lot but I feel like the harder part about it is just the meetings because you're sitting in meetings all day offense receiver special teams all these units and stuff you got to retain all that information for the next practice and also you got to pay attention to stuff when you're sleepy or whatever so Mm. it's it's definitely a lot but yeah like you said Jalen like you got, you really got to love it. Like you can say all you want, but when you get there, you, you really have to love it to keep up with it. For sure. Yeah. I, I just seen a lot of good guys, like, man, they get there for maybe one year and then like maybe one more off season. And then, you know, they end up fizzling out and end up at the state school, going to school, which is like, it's fine. You know what I mean? But like, some people need that to like really realize that, Hey, maybe it wasn't for me, but um yeah, there's something to be said with guys that kind of stick it out and, and really figure it out. And I think it, I've learned in my off time now, um, you know, I work for myself, so there's not really anybody kind of like telling me what to do, when to do it. But I can like look back on my times, of, you know, mm-hmm. being in school and being in camp and having to set a schedule and meet certain deadlines and all that kind of stuff. So I definitely think it, it translates over to life and helps in the long run. But, yeah, uh, I agree. Yeah, for sure. I agree. Yeah, I see. <laughs> Night, they roommate gone. Yeah, you like, man, where the bug? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody can handle it. Yeah. I mean, that's at all levels. Um, so, like you said, you really got to love the game and you know be able to get through the meetings and you know practice. And then you know you got thirty minutes to take a nap and you got another meeting or another you know a two a day or a lift. And don't miss, don't be late. Five, you know, yeah. two minutes, five minutes, and it's yeah. just like, yeah, yeah. No. I loved it though back then. I ain't gonna lie. I yeah, loved, no. I loved the camp life. It was just ball and eat, sleep. School obviously that's another another wrinkle. <laughs> um, but yeah, no, kind of kind of moving on. So obviously right now it's a lot of a lot of great wideouts in the game. We always ask this question, but for you, you know, you, you watch a lot of NFL, a lot of college ball. You got your own little podcast in a sense with the Snapchats doing the uh, NFL reviews <laughs> and all of that. So if you ain't if you don't know, you don't know yet, definitely tap in with, with my guy on, on Snapchat for those during the season, but. You know, who who is your favorite wideout and why, whether it's college or, or NFL, or, or you can go go both and, and pick. I I'm gonna I'm gonna go with two guys. They're both NFL guys, but one's technically an all time guy now because he's retired. You already probably know who it's gonna be, but Julian Edelman, like yeah. everybody call me everybody <laughs> called me that in high school. Like, I mean white guy, slot, same build pretty much, like I get it, but I really love him, like, watching him in uh, New England every year. I love him because he probably wasn't the best receiver, most talented, maybe didn't get the most recognition, but he was dominant at what he did. He was – while he was in the league, I think he was the best slot receiver in the league personally, and him and Brady obviously had their their connection and stuff, which is huge for especially slots to have with their quarterbacks. Um, Just watching him – Find open. I feel like he didn't even really have a route tree. He just had to get open type thing. Mm-hmm. Brady would find him and he'd get yak after the catch and stuff. And so he's definitely my all time favorite receiver. But right now, it would have to be Devontae Adams, who I think is still the best receiver in the league. I, I know uh, Jefferson and Tyreek and some of these guys are up there, but I, I still think it's Devontae. Um, I, I haven't seen anybody like check him ever like in the last three years that I can imagine you know obviously this year he was in Vegas and didn't have his talented quarterback play but he still put up a ton of yards and ton of stats and stuff made the Pro Bowl Um, so he's my favorite to watch right now and I think he's the best in the game still right now yeah, but you agree? What you think? No, nah, I can't. <laughs> I know I, I can't like just say you crazy for saying that though. Yeah. He is. He's up there. I mean, with everything. Um, 
my favorite is Jamar Chase. That's just me personally. But, you know, yeah. I guess he might not have the stats and everything, but yeah. just as far as, like, producing. he's producing, yeah, and he can do anything. He can go in the slide, go outside, kind of, like, you know, take some reverses, and he can get the yak. He makes the tough catches and stuff like that. Yeah. So if I was going to, like, pick a guy that I wanted to have on my team, it'd probably be him. Yeah. Um, I, I think – mean those guys, though. Yeah, no, I think I think Devontae and, um, and um, Jefferson, I think they're more uh, – they need, like – a little bit more high reps type of deal. Yeah. Like they kind of need to get the ball eight, nine, ten times. But I mean, why wouldn't you get them the ball eight, nine, ten times though? Yeah. So, but, no, so I can't hate. Jules and Jamar Chase. Um, another one on that too. So you didn't even call him, but just your thoughts on the this year's draft class. Who's your favorite? Who's the guy you watching or trying to even model your game after? Yeah. I, um, I think the uh, draft class is pretty good. Um, I think obviously, I think the best receiver in college ball isn't even able to go out yet. I think it's Marvin Harrison Jr. for sure. I mean, I just what he's done, what he did in the Rose Bowl last year as a freshman, and then this year as a sophomore, like he's the guy. Um, I think probably I think the best coming out is probably Jordan Addison. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, from I guess he is from USC now, but he played a pit too. I, he's incredible, and he obviously had a pretty bad injury, but I think he's gonna be fine. And I think the most interesting that will be Smith and Jigba because he missed mm-hmm. all that time and stuff. And I feel like I might just be hating because I know he's had a, other good performances, but I feel like his whole like stock is based off his Rose Bowl game last year a little bit like he had like 350 yards I think like broke the record and yeah all that it was crazy and obviously he's had some other good other good plays other good games I feel like fan like scouts and GMs are just going to look at that and be like how can we pass that up but it'll be interesting to see where he lands for sure that would be too bad hey, we can use, yeah. can use somebody yeah <laughs> we can use somebody. Hey, somebody. Stay healthy too. So yeah, that's another thing they're probably looking at. But no, those are those are some good some good names. So, like I said, two in a row. Jordan Addison. That's my that's my favorite pick too. Mm-hmm. Uh, he just smooth me all around. Um, playmaker and does all the intangible. So, uh, but that's good, man. I'm I'm glad that we can have you on and enjoy talking with you. Obviously, as a an OG Wild Crew member, we got that got that relationship, but. Where can the people find you? Instagram, Twitter, and then kind of what's on your horizon for the next next season, next two three years? Uh, what's what what goals you got? Yeah, so Instagram Ross underscore Johnston, and then Twitter just Ross Johnston. Um, two ends at the end on both of those, just because my actual name was taken, so I had to do it. <laughs> but yeah. uh, <clears throat> um, obviously next. Next two years, I'll still be in school here at Wheaton, playing ball, um, studying business economics. So trying to get a degree in that, obviously, um, is very big to me. Those are the two biggest things. And something I'm getting interested in might be starting up this summer is a little podcast. So we'll see Let's go. That, Let's uh, go. Yeah. See uh, what all happens with that. But, you know, you mentioned the Snapchat stuff. That's That was fun this year, but it it's kind of old and podcasts are kind of the new age media obviously y'all are on the mm-hmm. trend now so definitely thinking about doing that but i'd obviously promote that if it happens so y'all should follow me on yeah. social media yeah we will too once it, once it pops up so you gotta have you gotta have us on man so yeah yeah oh yeah now i get to ask you <laughs> all the questions yeah uh, <laughs> <laughs> no nah, that's that's a fat bro but like I said, no, I appreciate you having you on, bro, and uh, definitely best of luck in spring ball. Let us know. Send me the schedule, man. I'll come up there and come to spring game or even a uh, game next year. Um, but, yeah, no, keep keep doing what you're doing. Obviously, we'll be we tapped in this summer, so can't wait for you to get back. And, um, yeah, definitely, you know, tap into to White Out Wednesdays, YouTube, Instagram, um, all that stuff's in the description. We'll put it in there. Um, but, yeah, definitely tap in with us. Um, We'll be back next week on Wednesday, same time. So yeah. don't miss it. You know, who, who knows who'll be next? It might be Ross Johnson part two or who knows. <laughs> but um, but appreciate having you on, bro. Yep, for sure. Yeah. Stay healthy, bro. Yeah, appreciate you guys.